DXB. It's in the game! Hey guys, Ben here, and let me first start with a caveat before I dive fully into my review of the Bioshock collection on the Xbox One. Normally, I would capture my own footage uh, using either the PlayStation or the Xbox or the PC's built-in game DVR functionality for a game. For whatever reason, this has been dis disabled by 2K, and um, yeah, that's just not available for Bioshock. You can't take screenshots, you can't capture video, this could be a mistake, or it could have been a conscious decision on their part, I'm not sure. It's not the end of the world, it's a bit strange that that feature is mission, missing from a you know, re-release collection of an old series of games, but you know that's why you're seeing some trailers here and stuff like that that I found uh, on the internet. Uh, mostly you know directly from 2k themselves so hopefully they won't be too upset with me using this footage basically this is my review of the seminal series of Bioshock uh, you know one two and infinite and all the DLC included and uh, yeah this is quite the impressive package so let's just dive straight into it now when uh, Bioshock originally came out in 2007 on the Xbox 360 and the PC it was heralded as basically an instant classic. It did things with the first person shooter genre that we hadn't really seen much of in the past. Now, you have to remember Half-Life 2 did a lot with creating sort of an open world and emergent gameplay and a serious mature storyline for an FPS, but Bioshock really sort of went for it full, full force, you know, with morality and great storytelling, a fantastically compelling setting in the place that is the city under the sea of Rapture, you know, lots of politics, you, like I said before, morality, the questions the players have to ask themselves, the reveals that the game um, delves up later on, some of the best twists and most sort of famous lines of dialogue you might have ever come across in the video game, still quoted to this day. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a really special experience, and that's not changed at all in this release. Why would it have changed? It's still just as compelling. Um, I mean, I guess one of the things we talk about in re is um, what's been done with things like the graphics, have things changed particularly when it comes to the look of the game yeah it's been cleaned up we've got a 1080p transfer you know it's running at a better frame rate you know it's sort of optimized to try and be as close to 60 as possible so everything feels a bit smoother but you know the gameplay is will basically be as you remember it um, because you know that's how memories work this game probably didn't look as good as you think it does, did back then in 2007 because it was so impressive at the time but it certainly still looks good today you know the scenes as we're seeing here in the original Bioshock as you're taken into Rapture for the first time in the bathosphere are truly stunning uh, and gorgeous pieces of scene setting absolutely stunning and they just stay with you and this that sense of sort of style the vibe of Bioshock the feeling of the place is what makes it such an amazing environment to explore and to do your business around now your business is mostly shooting things uh, using plasmids which are these sort of power-ups you can get throughout the game you know leveling your character there's some up then some nice RPG mechanics in there as well that add depth to the experience which is something you'd come to expect now from a first-person shooter but was obviously less common in 2007 you know the examples that would have stood out at the time would have been things like the Half-Life series but most first person shooters weren't like that and we take a lot of it for granted now and Bioshock really set the bar very very high for that quality experience and especially on a console uh, after Bioshock we got Bioshock 2 which is a pretty direct sequel to the original uh, in which instead of playing as this dude you know that's been lost in a, in a plane crash over um, over Rapture you play as this experimental uh, big daddy no big spoilers really um, and it feels a bit more conventional it's more of the same of Bioshock and therefore it's a little bit less uh, exciting to play I suppose it's a little bit less groundbreaking but you know you're still dealing with this amazing setting you're still dealing with these compelling enemies which were being introduced to here in the video from the original the splices you know one thing you maybe forget from Bioshock and you know it's definitely there in Bioshock 2 as well is there's a strong horror element to these games there's a real creepiness and an oppressiveness to the environment and then you know the way the encounters are designed especially when you're facing big daddies for the first time you know it feels like an insurmountable force you have to really think about how to take them down but you know I've digressed a little bit gone back to Bioshock of course in Bioshock 2 you are playing as a big daddy so because of that you're a bit more powered up you're a bit more uber and a bit more impressive but hey you know that's what people wanted 
That's what people asked for after Bioshock. And then when it was given to them in Bioshock 2, they weren't that happy. Bioshock 2 is a damn fine game. It might not be like Ken Levine's baby like the first one was or Infinite was. It might have been done by a satellite studio at 2K. But it's still a fun experience. And it does have one of the best pieces of DLC created to this day in Minerva's Den. This is the piece of DLC that brought together the team that ended up going off and making Gone Home, which is one of my all-time favourite narrative experiences. It's a brilliantly self-contained two-hour experience or so, which takes you on a story and gives you a narrative, and I'm not going to spoil a jot of it because so many people missed out on it because not many people love Bioshock 2, and a lot of people by the time Minerva's Den maybe came around and already got rid of Bioshock 2. I know I had originally, but going back and playing Minerva's Den was one of the best video game experiences. It's absolutely fabulous, and I highly, highly recommend checking it out. Um, it's it's just fantastic stuff. And then we came on to Bioshock Infinite, the game that nearly ke killed Ken Levine, a game that was originally um, touted with so much scope, this open world, and basically the setting has changed in Bioshock Infinite. You go into, into the skies, which is so visually stunning again, as you can see in this video. It's such a compelling environment. It's gorgeous. And this is another one of those games that got a real kind of like heavy reception. It was a mixed... Um, response from the critics, especially as time has gone on. I really, really love Bioshock Infinite. I think it's a fun game. You know, some of the original design choices with things like the sky, um, the skylines, which you sort of fly around on with your hook, you can see that how originally it would have been more of an open world experience, and in the end it becomes a little bit closed in, and you get stuck on these sort of loops and stuff, and it doesn't feel as grand as they hoped, but it doesn't change the fact that the environmental design, again with the, the heavy moral choices and some really interesting kind of political stuff, it can be a little heavy handed at times. But you know what? It's nice to see video games trying this stuff. You can't fault them for giving it a go. Now, yeah, some of the writing could have been better. Some of the characterization could have been better. We could have had a little bit more in the way of um, antagonists and protagonists that we could have got behind and related to. Um, but it's that follows the character book of DeWitt and your sort of mission to um, rescue the, the girl in the ivory tower and this conspiracy and then there's time travel and there's these crazy twists and again it also has some fantastically good DLC which end up tying everything together and bringing it all around in one big compelling circle with the original game and it ties everything up in such a brilliant fashion you know it really is the end of the series maybe one day we'll get a little bit more Bioshock but I don't know I mean Ken Levine has obviously famously said you know he's gone irrational the developer behind these games is gone um, if we get it it'll be directly from 2k it won't have that same feel it won't be the same game um, that we've got here um, but or the, same, the same series we've got here but look if you never went around and played Bioshock the first time shame on you but you know hey people there's always coming are coming to the new consoles and stuff that maybe never played games before and that's totally fair um, this is a fantastic collection it's great value it's three massive games loads of content brilliant visuals great sound great environmental design great character design everything some of the best first person shooter action you will ever experience in a completely unique settings um, just amazing environments creepy unsettling uncomfortable compelling I can't think of any more adjectives off the top of my head right now except to say Bioshock the Collection is not to be missed and it gets from me uh, it, it can't get a 5 star because this is a re-release but if I was reviewing the games for the first time it would be 5 stars but it's going to get from me right now for the value and for the fact that you should play these games it's going to get 4 stars B X B. It's in the game.